Alrighty, guys, so um, I, the video that we previously recorded for this kind of got weird, right? It's kind of choppy, blocked out. Um, so this is going to be a supplement to that one, right? It's still good to kind of quickly watch that one. I can describe and talk about everything, automatic mapping, text tools. So hopefully you watched that one and you just thought it a little choppy. Maybe you got some of it, maybe you didn't. Um, this is going to be a supplement because there's still some good stuff in that other video, and I wanted to make sure you got kind of a, a, a video that goes over the mechanics without the choppiness or the dropping of frames. So I'm just going to quickly do the room, the uh, um, chair, and the uh, mainframe for you guys. Now remember, uh, you want to basically go to these little Vs right here, right? And there's more than one way to get around and do these things, right? But you click on these Vs and it does bring you up some extra tools, right? That's where you can see your loop tools, mesh tools. Um, obviously, if I grab a face, you can see there's loop tools here. So you'll see a lot of those right there. So it's not like you can't get them from other areas. Um, you just might like to have them right out in the open just to kind of... Um, uh, grab and do stuff with, right? Uh, and certain things I've just found like, uh, you know, that cut faces, you don't really see it um, in some of these tools because some of the tools you just don't see there, right? <coughs> so I still kind of like to have uh, these available on up here. Um, but one of the things we do is we hit that little kind of V on the side pointing out and we make sure to be on the edit tab, right? Because it brings up these tabs. Um, you hit the edit. If you have B Painter, right, that's where you get B Painter and all that good stuff. Um, but you go to edit and this is where mesh tools and loop tools are at. Uh, if you've got auto mirror turned on, it'll be right there, right? Uh, but the UV mapping section has your UVW. So you open that up and that's where you can get your best planer or your box map. Uh, so just kind of uh, pointing that out right there. Uh, so in this case, I'm, I'm three for face mode, right? And I'm gonna hit control A to select everything. And what I'm just gonna hit box. And you see what it basically does is it kind of uh, does six planers, right? It does a planar projection from this direction, this one, that one, the one, like top, bottom, left, right, front, back. And remember, planar projections like this are really just kind of, it's trying to do a flat shape, like a flat rectangle or square. So you can think of a planer as like just a regular sticker, um, you know, it's just it's, it's a square or rectangular projection. Uh, so it's good at doing walls, uh, anything that's really, really boxy. And in particular, a box does kind of the top, bottom, left, right, whereas the best planer just does it to whatever you have. Uh, one of the other things to remember, and I can always kind of uh, undo here really quick, just a little bit, is remember there is this little V right here, right? So we can click on that little V and that opens up your, uh, kind of your equivalent of these here in the UV editor, because we're in UV editing. And I went down to text tools, right? Uh, Magic UV, you see, has got kind of some of these guys right here. So that's why we kind of made you turn those on. Remember the video goes over that stuff. I'm trying to do this quick, um, just so it's only a couple minute long video. Uh, remember, we can go to edit, preferences, add-ons, right? Give it a second to catch up here. Um, and then it's just turning things on, right? There's lots of things you can turn on. UV LED's usually on by default anyways. I turn on modifier tools as well as, um, you know, loop tools and edit mesh tools, those guys. Uh, auto mirrors right there. So a lot of these scripts come with um, uh, Blender, right? Uh, and you can even see some things I have still haven't showed you guys, like Speed Top on B Painter. You have to buy B Painter, though. Um, it's pretty excellent, though. And then UV Magic and UV Text Tools are down here as well. And remember, when you want to add any uh, kind of stuff, and I've shown this in videos before as well, you just go to install, right? And you find out where you've downloaded it at and you just double click on it, right? And that'll install it. And then it's in here and you just have to check it on. Um, so remember, if you go to text tools here though, you will see that right up here is your ability to pick a preset resolution. I'll do 2048 and do checker map, right? And as long as you have kind of your uh, use wireframes there, shaded's there, uh, that's going to show Eevee with your full material preview, right? So it'll show your textures, uh, any material preview stuff. It's basically showing your real-time Eevee stuff, right? And you can see that's uh, not really ideal, right? It's got some areas where its distortion is not too bad, but some areas where it's really bad, right? And that's what those checkerboards are for, is showing you the distortion. So I'll hit 3, go back to there, Control-A for select all faces, and just box. And you see all of a sudden that this is already doing a much better job for us, right? And then what I want to do is I'm just going to go in here, uh, put my cursor over this view, control A, because that the kind of views are dependent on where your cursor's at, um, but the same kind of quickies work here, right? And then we can go to uh, UV. And if we want, we can just use this pack UV right here. And that should do a pretty good job of kind of packing everything and giving it the overall proper relative size it has. Uh, if you need to, you can always go to UV layout here. And particularly since you have text tools and it's free out on, um, you know, you can always kind of, um, Sample the textile density, hit apply. You see how kind of just resize them a little bit. The sizes are maybe off just a smidge, right? Um, and then you can always just kind of pack them again, right? 
There we go. And you see that this now gives us a pretty good UV unwrap, right? That's pretty good. Uh, might be a little bit distorted right there, but not too much. And we're going to be 3D projection painting, so um, this will work pretty well. And a lot of this project is about getting you guys to see box mapping anyways, right? So uh, that would be how you would do the room, right? And how that would be uh, UV unwrapped. Uh, so now at this point, what I want to do, let's see that really quick. I'm going to go file open, and I'm going to find the chair. There we go. We're going to open up that chair. Because these are the ones that were kind of in that one video, but didn't really get ideally done. The video kind of got weird when we captured it. Didn't realize it until later on. And so what we do here is we do have two objects, right? And we can keep them separate if we wanted to, but we can also just select both, right? Hold down right mouse button, join, make them one object. And then of course, as we go along here, and if we want, we can apply all, right? So if I go to um, my uh, blue wrench, I can apply any modifiers are still there. Normally you would just go here to apply, but if you have the uh, modifier tools add-on turned on, you should apply all and it applies every modifier, right? So in this case, uh, we'll make sure that's turned on. And we'll go here really quick just to text tools and we'll set that to 2048, checker map, boom. And now what I want to do is I want to do some unwrapping. So I'll click on this V. Remember those little Vs are what opens these up. If you kind of move them to the right, like you kind of grabbed here and slide it over, it closes it, right? Uh, but those little Vs kind of open it up. Uh, in this case, I'm going to hit three for face mode. I'm just going to select a face. Uh, remember, you can use your select linked, right? I have a, the quickie space bar set to it because I like it better for that, but the right bracket key is your quickie for that. But it is select linked, right? Right there, you can see I've added some of my own shortcuts since I'm doing this at home for you guys. Uh, then we go to edit, and you see I've got lots of things turned on here, right? So as you go and you turn on more and more of these things, you'll you'll see them available there. Um, many of these come with it, right? Some of them don't. Um, but we go to UV mapping, we go to UVW, and we do box. And we'll see that that will do a pretty good job of unwrapping these guys. Now in this case, I don't want to repack those quite yet. I just wanted to get a good box map for those, right? But you can even see here, Low distortion, right? That checkerboard is really about seeing how your distortion is going to look. When it's not looking checkerboard, your UVs are heavily distorted. And what you're going to have is when your texture goes on a paint, it's not going to paint that well, right? It's going to paint pretty poorly. Um, so what you're looking for is low distortion. If it's pretty checkerboard, you're going to have generally pretty good UVs and the textures are going to go on and look pretty good on your models. Uh, in this case, though, I wanted to use automatic mapping for those, but I wanted to use uh, unfold for these. So I'm going to go two for edge mode. And I'm just going to double click to select an edge loop there. Uh, double left click, right? Shift double left click to select another edge loop. And in this case, you can see they're not wrapping all the way around, I think, because when I did the mirror, uh, it might not have had the clipping on. My bad. Um, and, and that's fine, right? Just make sure to select all the way around the loops, right? <laughs> there we go, because I'm just showing you how to UV and wrap these. Um, and what we do remember is you go, uh, so you select your edge loops and you see these follow cushions, right? These follow the seams that would go on a normal actual cushion, right? Look at clothing, look at furniture, uh, particularly with fabrics, and that will uh, give you a strong guide to where your seams should be at for well character creatures, but also um, furniture, right? So I'm just gonna right click and I'm gonna mark seams. Remember, you right click and bring up the edge context menu. I'm just gonna mark seam. There we go. Now we can see those nice red seams have been made. And then what we do is we just go to three for face mode again, and we just select some faces. Now remember, your select link actually uh, obeys the seams, right? So if you don't select polygons on both sides, it'll only select one kind of shell, which is actually kind of cool. But we want, that's why I selected polygons on both sides, so it selected all the shells, right? Uh, and then what we could do is we could simply go to UV, unwrap, and uh, you'll see there's actually uh, I can't remember if 2.9 2 and below had this. I might have to take a look at that. Um, but um, in 2.91 at a minimum, uh, you actually have a lot of these options here, like cube, cylindrical sphere. Um, but we're just going to do a uh, regular unwrap. And there we go. Now, in this case, you can see I think when um, I mirrored it over, it actually um, created a bunch of duplicates. Uh, so that might be what's causing a little bit of an issue for that one for uh, this guy. Um, in this case, I could always just, you know, quickly undo this because this will show you how quickly you could do this, right? Once you get you know, to know how this stuff works pretty quickly and easily, uh, not terribly difficult. So I'll go back to before I mirrored those, uh, apply all, because uh, that one's already good beforehand. That's really what caused the problem. Join those. 
go through to face mode, and boom, backs map, two for edges. And you start selecting the whole edge this time. So uh, unfortunately, I joined and then did my apply all, and that actually kind of reconstructed these as duplicates and made a, a bit of a mess. Um, but you see how fast this is when you actually know what you're doing, right? When you know Blender, when you know what you're doing for your UV stuff, select all, and then of course UV unwrap. And there we go, much, much better, right? And then of course, you know, I can do that quick checker map. And there we go. And at this point, I'm gonna hit three for face mode again. I'm just gonna hit control A to select all. And then um, actually select all in this viewport, so it selects everything. And select all here, right? Control A is your quickie for select all, right? Um, and it works independently in the different viewports, which is actually kind of neat. Sometimes slightly annoying, sometimes kind of neat. You can do sync stuff, but I found that sometimes that's a little weird or it doesn't always do exactly what you want to do, so up to you. Um, and then of course we can go to UV and um, we can pack UVs, there we go. Now in this case, so it made these really small, right? So that's where things like UV layout, um, you know, kind of quickly sample and then hit apply and you set up kind of resizes everything to have the proper uh, uniform uh, or fairly uniform text tool density. So I like to just sometimes with text tools, click on this one and then apply. Um, if you don't have that, you can always do average island scale and then pack, right? But you see how that packs a much better, more uniform kind of um, UV set. So particularly with text tools add, add on installed, um, you can always click on this little kind of um, teardrop thing or eyedropper and that samples the text density um, of this, the actual, um, Textile's uh, texture element, right? And so it's kind of looking at basically the relative sizes in the view, viewport space uh, relative to each other. And it just finds the kind of proper measurement for that. You can apply it and then when you go to pack, everything will be kind of um, sized relative to each other uh, fairly correctly. And once again, there you've got UV unwrapping. But you see how you can actually use box and unfold specifically on the different parts? You just select the polygons you want to unwrap, right? Simple enough, select the polygons you want to unwrap. Uh, last but not least, I'm going to open up the mainframe. So save that. There we go. And we're going to kind of apply the same thing here, right? Uh, in this case, you know, we're going to uh, apply all. And then I'm going to apply all just so that everything's kind of good to go there. Close those up a little bit. Uh, I could leave them separate if I want to. I can also combine them. Uh, I'll just keep it simpler, make them one. So remember, uh, select both, right? Click on one, shift click on the other. Right click, join, because right click will bring up object object context sensitive. And then of course we go three, uh, bring up UV editing. And in this case, I just want to quickly do a box map for this guy. So select this one and then select linked, right? Select linked, got a quick give my own setup for that. And open that little V up, make sure to turn edit on. And we go to uh, UV mapping, UVW, box, there we go. Now, of course, if we want to start to see our distortion grid, we open up this little V right there, text tools, so we can kind of do our quick, you, you click on this one to pick, you can set your own resolution, but there's a bunch of great presets. Uh, 2048, hit checker map. And now we can see kind of the actual checkerboard for that. Now, these ones we want to set up as unfolds, right? So I'm going to go to two for edge mode. And I'm just going to go in here and just, you know, double, double left click. Shift double left click, shift double left click. Same thing on this side, right? Shift double left click, shift double left click, shift double left click. Just to select those as seams, right? Because those are hoses. And then we can right click, mark seam. And then of course we can grab the polygons on each of these. Control A, or uh, in this case, uh, select linked, right? I've got spacebar set to it, but uh, right bracket's kind of the default quickie for it. Select, select, linked. And what we can do is we can do a quick UV, unwrap. And one of the things you'll notice is that, um, in particular, if you, hit f if you put your cursor in the UV editor here and you hit four, right? You'll notice that you're actually in object select mode, but that treats these kind of islands, these shells, uh, usually they're called islands in most packages. It treats them like they're their own little objects. And you see how they're not quite rectangle? So they're ultimately still pretty good low distortion. So if you didn't need to do like say um, straight linear piping or like a, a nice little checkerboard touch to it, like a, if you wanted a, a super repetitive, precise geometric pattern, um, this unfolds not gonna be perfectly ideal for it, 
if you're just painting regular color and kind of just general noise and texture that's not super ge geometric, not super repetitive, not really gonna matter. But when you do want a more geometric texture, which is what we're gonna do with these, you wanna make sure to go into UV layout in text tools, right? Select the islands and there's something called rectify. And you'll notice what rectify does is it takes these and it makes them perfect rectangle shapes, right? And you don't need to do this all the time. It's really more for pipes, hoses, things like that, that you want to be perfectly rectangular for a highly repetitive geometric texture to go on there. But that will give you a pretty good result for those. And then of course, you know, I can go to this view, control A, then go to this view, control A, UV, actually uh, do a quick, you know, uh, eyedropper and then hit apply and that kind of resizes them uh, to be uh, proper size relative to each other in 3D space. You see how the checkerboard is pretty evenly distributed now? That's not always the case. Like if this was a, a, a more muted, simple texture and this needed a lot of detail, you could always kind of make the UVs for this a lot smaller and these a lot bigger uh, to kind of um, redistribute how many pixels one part gets to another. Um, generally though, nowadays uh, you have enough texture resolution that it's not too much of an issue. And usually the texture density you want fairly uniform, um, fairly even relative to each other. Um, but like I said, kind of always depends. Then we go to UV menu and we can just do a quick pack UV and there we go. And now we can see kind of some pretty good, pretty low distortion UV and wrapping. We get to see some of the neat op features we have for text tools here again, right? Um, uh, rectify your ability to kind of um, sample text density uh, and then apply that, um, you know, more about your unwrap tools, packing tools. Uh, but even the ability to do that cool, kind of cool checkerboard thing, thing feature. All right, uh, so I think that'll be a great place to stop for that video.